It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the third biennial symposium of the Historians of Islamic Art Association here at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, titled Looking Widely, Looking Closely. The fact that over 200 people are participating, either as speakers, chairs, or members of the audience, maybe not all here right now in this moment, but tomorrow there will be, um, this speaks well of the vitality of our field. I know that all of us will leave here more enlightened than when we arrived, both from the papers that we will hear and from our interaction with one another. Now, normally, our president, Shreve Simpson, would come to the podium to thank our generous donors who have made this symposium possible. However, Shreve is at home nursing two broken wrists. So uh, we're really sad that she missed today, but I have to say that um, we're being filmed, so she'll be able to hear most of the papers. I mean, see them, um, I, I hope, on YouTube eventually. Anyway, um, I know that you all wish me, I mean, join me in wishing her a, a speedy recovery. Now, as president-elect and symposium organizer, uh, I have the pleasant task of mentioning our donors um, names. We're very grateful to the Aga Khan Museum for their substantial support and to the International Center for Medieval Art for supporting one of the panels. Closer to home, the Mosavar Rahmani Fund for Iranian Art has sponsored seven speakers on Iranian subjects. The Institute for the Study of the uh, Ancient World and the Institute of Fine Arts, both of New York University, have kindly agreed to host our two receptions or give the space where they're going to be. Um, we hope that you will join us uh, tonight at ISAW um, after the lecture. Finally, the Metropolitan Museum of Art has supported us in innumerable ways, such as waiving fees and providing help on many levels, including volunteers and security whom you saw as you were coming in. The symposium could not have taken place without the hard work of our program committee, consisting of Persis Burlkamp, Tarek Kahlawi, and myself, but really it's them. <laughs> I'm not thanking myself. Um, many, many thanks to Persis and Tarek because they managed to fit in uh, this work into their hectic schedules and going on leave and travels, etc. Now, the local committee, um, it, which is Pinar, Gok Pinar, Iman Abdel Fattah, and Julia Rooney, the symposium assistant, have done everything from producing our brochures to buying wine all while they were supposed to be studying and doing their jobs. I'm sure the studies and the jobs are the better for their work on this symposium, and I'm hugely grateful to them. Without wishing to spend too much time, I would like to call attention to some important things that have happened to our association in the last two years since the second biennial symposium in Washington. First, our website has been revamped and is now more up-to-date and user-friendly than before. Our webmaster is Jennifer Pruitt, who stepped in in midterm and has kept the website on an even keel. We had a successful majlis at Hunter College in 2011 and look forward to planning another in the interim between uh, this symposium and the next one. Thanks to the hard work of Nancy Micklewright, uh, the University of Michigan and the Freer and Sackler Galleries, the papers from the Second Biennial Symposium have appeared in the latest Ars Orientalis. An order form is included in your symposium pack. In the wider world of Islamic art, the opening of the new galleries here at the Met one year ago and at the Louvre last month has noticeably increased the amount of material that we can study and enjoy firsthand. Unfortunately, these events have occurred against a backdrop of destruction of and threat to monuments, particularly in Syria, as well as a terrible loss of life. I'm sure that each of us in our own way will seek ways to help, but I think that associations such as ours play an important role in reminding people of the importance of the cultures and art in which we specialize. I will now turn uh, over the podium to Renata Hollod, our past president, who will give you the news about the Oleg Grabar Memorial Fund and this year's grantees.
Thank you, Sheila. Good, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, we are very pleased to inaugurate uh, this program and um, have been um, very, very uh, pleasantly surprised at the response to our call um, uh, that we put out um, a year ago uh, to develop this fund. So um, be before I uh, announce the first grantees, let me just say that um, we thank everybody who's contributed, but in particular, we thank the leadership donors um, who uh, are listed here. And uh, could I ask the ones that are here to please get up um, and uh, so that we can also thank them. Uh, so we have the, the um, suit of our Memorial Foundation that is represented by uh, Leila uh, Diba. Uh, we have uh, Nicholas Grabar. Um, and we have the representatives of the Sabanja Foundation. Thank you very much uh, all. And also thank you all those of you who uh, contributed uh, various amounts. And we look forward to more contributions uh, so that uh, we can keep on investing it and it can kick off uh, more uh, grants and uh, um, travel funds. So to, uh, this year's first uh, batch are the following. Uh, Alia Lester, Hala Auji, and Unver Rustem, um, all of whom will, um, I'm sure, do very well with the support. I also am announcing the fact that uh, the travel funds, uh, the travel grant, uh, the Garbar travel grant, will be given twice a year, so please be alert to uh, the announcements as they come out. Um, I think I'm done with this and we can now get on to the next part of the 